my guys in the OCD. I'm just waiting for Andrew, then we'll be on the way. I don't need mic today. Mute your, mute your mic, you bloody bastard. Why are you muting me? What's wrong? It's not how it works, dog. This is how it works. How it works when I roll, Andrew. What's going on? I was just saying how to do a TV, because they were, they were left hanging. Fucking slackers. What are we going to do with you, Parker? Slip slap. <laughs> Welcome back to Star Ladder Season 10, ladies and gentlemen. European Day 13 coverage resumes. We've got a lot of good games coming up today. It's the day of Cloud9. We saw them yesterday in a pretty epic match where Envy barely pulled out a win with some cheeky Naga plays, but uh, they'll, have, uh, they'll have a lot to prove today. They've got at least three matches, but first up, MYM, the team that upset Alliance yesterday, Parker. Yeah, MYM, they were off a hot win, and uh, looking forward to seeing them play once again, beat Alliance and taking on Cloud9, who... Cloud9 didn't look good yesterday. They may have won that game, but that was an uh, unconvincing performance. So, Cloud uh, and, turn to With that said, they, they played amazingly when they were at WEC line, so uh, you can kind of forgive them for their one-off bad games. Radiant team ban. Yeah, that's for sure. And I'm struggling with these overlays here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, and you sound a lot better today. Looks like you uh, upgraded your potato to uh, at least a tomato. Sounds a little better. Yeah, got some good remaining. french fries now, so much more edible. Ah, that's good stuff, good stuff. Five it. seconds remaining. So, initial picks here looking fairly straightforward. Cloud9 grab Razor and Nature's Prophet Reserve to get things started. Time. And MYM pick up, of course, the Skywrath Mage and the Death Prophet. Both sides a little bit of pushing power, but we'll get to see the Bone 7 Nature's Prophet. And I want to ask you, Parker, what do you think about this Euro Nature's Prophet build we keep seeing? The <laughs> two or three Null Tally in the Blade Mail. Yeah, it's... It's a funny one. It, it, I, I, mean, I think it's good. Blade Mail just gives Prophet so much damage, and with Treads, like, he can just fight squishy supports especially, and that's exactly kind of what MYM have in the Skyrath Mage. Like, the, the Blade Mail Prophet is fantastic against Skyrath Mage. You TP on Skyrath Mage, he's kind of screwed. He can't fight you because you Blade Mail, and he can't really... Well, I mean, he can Ten run. He's pretty fast, remaining. but if you get sprouted, if you have no escape, you're, you just die. So, Five I really like remaining. it. I, I mean, I've, I actually... Funnily enough, when I was still in LA playing some pub games, I ran into Bone7 Reserve like four time. pub games in a row, and every game he was picking profit going this build. So <laughs> I've had some experience versing it myself, and it is a Cloud pain nine, in the fucking ass, man. Like, that is the most annoying shit ever to deal with. So uh, now everyone does it. It's it's becoming becoming a thing. I think people are starting to realize just how strong Blade Mel is as an item, which is, I think, what Bone7 is really highlighted with this build. Um, it's a great counter to heroes like Skyrath Mage, and on Intel Heroes, it gives you huge damage. Um, yeah. Sort of semi-carry Intel Heroes like Nature's Prophet. There aren't really many of them, I guess. So it's Nature's Prophet's kind of the best candidate. Ten it seconds just doesn't come down. Yeah, it seems like Blade Mail is mostly valuable for the stats. And the Five use is sort remaining. of 50-50. In the games that I've seen, it's only been like three or four in Star Ladder we've seen it so pick. far. But usually it's pretty easy just to ignore the, the Blade Mail usage. And it's that extra armor you get and all that extra damage from the right click. Yeah, so. I mean... It gets ignored, but it's like a semi-BKB. Like, you BKB, people have to ignore you. So, in that sense, it gives you this, like, five-second window where you can't be attacked, you can, or you can be attacked, but, in, it, like you say, if you're being ignored, it means you're dealing damage. So, it's kind of like a, a poor man's BKB in some ways. Ten uh, seconds. It's maybe a, a sort of, I don't know, it's not like an exact comparison, but it's five a similar concept remaining. where you pop the blade mail, no one wants to fight you, so you get your freedom to attack, to do whatever Reserve you want. Time. Yeah. Well, I think there's a pretty good chance we'll see that build from Bone7 once again here. The, the weirdest part about it is it truly is only European players that do it. I have not seen a single Nature's Prophet outside of the European oh. division even attempt I, to build. I saw a tweet. I didn't see the game, but Starlighter SCA, apparently there was some um, Blade oh, Mail Prophet from Ohio, I want to say. spreading? Oh, no. Yep. I, oh, no. He, he mixed it up. He went braces. Blade Mail. Uh, <laughs> not no Talisman. He went braces. Blade Mail. So. Oh, man. All right. Well, we'll keep our eyes open here. Uh, Arise is drafting for MYM today, and they have another stand-in, uh, and it is Quix. Was that their stand-in yesterday? Yeah, he played yes. yesterday. He played really well. Okay, nice. yeah. So this is their, this like their all-star lineup here, the team that upset Alliance. Maybe they can do it again against Cloud9. It is Eternal Envy drafting on the Dunner side, and no stand-ins for C9 today. MYM will think about it for a while, but will eventually settle on a Vengeful Spirit. And no Batrider or Faceless Void, where we often see her picked up, but just uh, a nice, nice solid support, the aura, the, the scouting potential, remaining. all the stuff we've talked about. Nice, nice solid lockdown there. 
Yeah, and we still need most likely their safe lane carry. They could run center in the safe lane and grab an off laner, but I mean, I'm, actually, I'm actually don't mind the safe lane center with the death profit. They've got a lot of pushing powers, and death profit kind of acts as the carry if you get a ridiculously farmed death profit. So if you're going to go that route, Centaur getting a fast blink creates the space death, death profit needs. So you mm -hmm. can see what MYM elect to do, but for Cloud9, pretty... I mean, they haven't got anything out of the out of the ordinary, which is what kind of Cloud9 do every now and then. This is most likely going to be a standard Wraith King. I want to say support. Razor, I guess the flexible pick that can go mid or in the safe lane for Envy, though. Yeah. I don't know if Envy's really been playing that much Razor. When they pick him, the little I've seen, it's been more of a Fata-style hero, but still that option. Drill Ranger and Naga were banned out, and that does limit a couple of uh, Cloud9's pocket strats. They love themselves some Visage Dro, and uh, that will not be happening yeah. here. So, mm -hmm. what the does yeah, I don't, I don't know if you really want to go clinks against these heroes. Uh, you definitely can. Uh, he probably he likes to go for that blink build, which is kind of essential against these strong, high damage, burst, bursty heroes. So, yeah, I imagine Cloud9 will stray away from the clinks. I had Jakiro. This is. Radiant this was really EG showed like this is just the support hero in some ways at WEC. Yeah. Um, next to Scarath Mage, like this Scarath Mage and Jakiro are definitely the two top supports right now. Yeah, Jakiro for the versatility. I mean, the core Jakiro is something that you can't totally Ten write off as a possibility, remaining. and it's pretty damn strong. If you give him farm priority, he can uh, rush a mech Five at the very least, get a remaining. quick Basilius, knock down that first tower very easily, um, then even start to move into some utility items Reserve like a, a decently time. timed pipe and. It's hard to deal with the pushing power that he puts out, and there's such a variety of builds you can remaining. do as well. If you need some more utility, you can go for that Ice Path primary build uh, alongside Five the Liquid Fire, remaining. and if you need damage, you can level up that Dual Breath as a primary, Cloud and nine. that is a da uh, an ability that scales surprisingly well in terms of damage. The burn gets uh, gets pretty nasty if you have it at level 4 at level 7. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see what... Cloud9 haven't saw it their last pick. I, I think the is a really remaining. good ban here. I think it's a hero that just disrupts the team fight of MYM so much. Even Five if they have the Skyrath Mage, uh, it's it is like you've got two silences in Skyrath Mage Reserve and Death Prophet. Time. But Brewmaster is just such an all-around good hero. Should he get his ultimate off against Death Prophet, Centaur, Skyrim, the squishy supports will just kind of melt, and it just create it, it creates a space that Razor needs to do his thing and. I don't think Cloud9, they don't, definitely don't need to carry with this Ten last pick. Prophet and Razor remaining. offer more than enough as far as uh, late game potential goes. And they don't even need to go late game when they've got the Jakiro with the pushing power of Liquid Fire. Radiant team yeah, pick. Uh, Tidehunter will be the final ban from Cloud9. I'm a little surprised to see That was group. the key pick yesterday, yeah. <laughs> Tide. Yeah, for sure. And now Cloud, Cloud or pardon me, MYM grab Weaver in a pretty good game for it. Not a huge mm. amount of lockdown on the side of Cloud9. They've got Wraithfire Blast and... Uh, the Ice Path, but aside from that, the Elusive Weaver should prove to be yeah. a pretty solid pick here. I like, I like Weaver. It doesn't get to see too much play, but I think he's a hero that... I mean, he's fallen off just with the kind of play style that we're seeing now. He doesn't really do a whole lot in the early five-man death balls. He doesn't really split push very well, but remaining. you put him in the right lineup, and he can do quite nicely. And being, being mobile remaining. to get away from the Razor Static Link, um, you can destroy... The Wraith Fire Blast is a lot Weaver can do against this line, but Puck, that's that's your father here. The best, <laughs> yeah, that's your father here, and that's one of your, like your best Weaver counters in the game. So, yeah, not a fun hero for Weaver to have to match up against. Yep, the Silence and the Tether, pretty good stuff. So it will indeed be Eternal Envy on the Razor and the Safe Lane. It'll be Bone Seven on that Nature's Prophet, and Owie will be the one to take up the Jakiro with Pili Die. Heading over to the Wraith King. So, eh, pretty straightforward draft from Cloud9. Not quite as creative yeah. as they've uh, been known for, but heroes that all their players are certainly comfortable on. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see what the plan's going to be for Cloud9. Having some some gank potential with the Wraith King and Jakiro, they may look to... I, I mean, you look at this MYM draft, Ten and I think the key hero you want to shut down like in a draft like this is definitely the Death Prophet. Uh, if you can get Five an like, early killer to a Death Prophet, if Death Prophet doesn't farm well... And why I'm in trouble. Like your Weaver, most likely safe lane. Even if it's not, Weaver's not a hero. Like it's like your safe lane anti mage. Like you don't have to stop an anti mage from farming. You just win the win the mid game. Win your other lanes. Focus there. Focusing the death prophet is going to be. Battle. I think Cloud9's best bet with early games. Yeah.
And I can't argue on that front. Let's see how these lanes will settle down for MYM. Looks like they're stand-in quicks. Uh, we saw them yesterday. We'll once again be on the Weaver in the safe lane. Arise will take solo mid on the Death Prophet. And they will go for an aggro try. Rise will be on the Skywrath. Blonde will be on the Vengeful Spirit, which puts Ace on the Centaur Warrunner. So sort of an interesting choice to go aggro try built around a Centaur. Hmm. And they've got a strong aggro try, but C9, Razor, pretty good himself. Uh, I don't think... It's necessarily going to be an aggro try. They're just going to straight up head on win. Weaver, though, 1v1 against Nature's Prophet. Again, not convinced it's a like a hugely favored matchup towards the towards MYM. So I don't feel like they're trialing destroys seconds. Cloud9's trial. I don't feel like their solo matchups are that much stronger. The one thing, the one advantage of running offensive trialing is it does mean that Arise gets protected in the mid lane just because it's harder for Cloud9 to rotate their supports if they're dealing with an offensive trialing. With that said, MYM, their supports haven't yet committed to an offensive trialing. Yeah, they are going to rotate around a little bit, and Blonde will stay up top, and we'll see how it settles down. They're just trying to position appropriately for an initial skirmish that the could break out. Begins. Initial wards coming down. Radiant will throw one down in the mid lane on their side of the river, and one on the high ground to get some vision of the top rune. Dyer will just go straight for uh, vision control uh, of the runes here. One at the and top, one at the bottom. Hmm. Yep. He's, he's at bottom, so... I'm wondering what he's got planned here. Actually goes dual breath level 1, okay. So going for the damage over the hmm. liquid fire of the ice path. And... Yeah, even when I've seen Jakiro's level dual breath as more of a primary, usually it's not the level 1 spell, but it does have a pretty yeah. significant amount of damage at level 1, and the, the slow for 5 seconds is pretty solid, 30%. Yeah, I guess there is some pretty serious kill potential there. It's also just like normally you'd see normally you see someone like AUI just hold the skill point. Like if you run into a scenario where you need Ice Path to save a teammate, he maybe goes for that, but... Yeah. Well, MYM will commit to this aggro try with Cloud9. Uh, the their, their pull was uh, a bit uh, uncoordinated there. Uh, the Wraith King went to pull. AUI walked in, drew aggro, and messed up the pull. So, a bit of a miscommunication from Pile I Die and AUI there. Yeah. MYM did reveal the their comments. smoke right around that same time, though. So, perhaps just trying to position yeah. in case an engagement breaks out. But the first smoke will be rendered, rendered unsuccessful. I guess a minor victory for Cloud9 right out of the gate. Okay, so this is, I like the offensive try in the sense you can get Centaur the fast blink because Centaur are one of those heroes that's really good at controlling a game if you can get like a eight nine minute blink dagger, mm -hmm. and that's that's going to come down to whether they leave the support to top or go for some early ganks. And they've already had Vengeful Spirit rotating down towards bottom lane, and I think this is something that could catch Bone Seven by surprise. Like the Weaver vs. Prophet matchup, Bone Seven may think it's just a straight up one v one matchup. He may get a bit greedy, and if the Vengeful Spirit catches him off guard, like you could be looking at a unexpected first blood happening towards bottom lane. But but now it's pushed out, so Bone Seven's pretty safe. Yeah, and now that the creeps are shoving into the tower, he'll be able to last hit a little bit more. But Quix is off to a hell of a start. He's nine and one against the four and one Prophet of uh, Bone Seven here. Looks like he will be grabbing at least one null tally, and has that ring of protection to grab the early Basilius. So still. Pretty standard stuff from the Prophet in the context of Bone 7, though he is out of regeneration now. He's forced to use that initial salve nice and early. Haystrun picked up by the Skywrath Mage as he heads towards the top lane. And I don't know too much will come of it here. Stun out onto Ace and Pylai die, just harassing him back. Just, yeah, it's just rude control at this point, all looking for kills. And I think the the main problem for Cloud9 with this trailing is when these supports go rotate towards other lane or mid lane, meanwhile, Korea being sniped. Bone 7. Yep. He's in good it. Now rise. He's caught inside of the Sprout. Fada should have plenty of damage to bring him down, but it's a Rise that gets the first blood. Oh man, Bone okay. 7, he overestimates his damage without a Null Tally. And he falls. <laughs> no Null Tally, no win. Um, <laughs> I, I Slightly... That's on his Cloud9 favorite, I, as you'd think, maybe. Like, Death Prophet getting the first blood there helps Death Prophet quite a lot. Like, even though you end up dying... If he'd lost his bottle on the Korea, it would have been really bad, but he got his bottle on the Korea, then the Korea died. That's the big thing there. So the fact that Ryze didn't lose his bottle is huge. And now Fat at mid needs to face shift this Crypt Swarm. Pretty straightforward. He almost finds himself in a bit of trouble. But Ryze has really good control over this mid lane now. Yeah. Puck does have a decent experience advantage, though, from that little exchange about uh, half a level ahead of yeah. Death Prophet. Not too game-breaking, but a small edge there. Their CS is just about dead even. So a small okay. goal boost for Cloud9, though, as they get that courier kill. 
And they'll just go back to farming in the mid. Bone Seven will just sack the offlane, and he heads straight into the jungle. Has completed that null talisman, and now grabs his Basilius. Sitting level three, uh, will be able to uh, clear out this hard camp pretty easily. It's just it's so much safer. He's got t the, the wave bottom pushes as it does the tower. He may consider TPing now, uh, since he's got his tower for protection. So. Uh, we'll see if he elects to do so, and I, I don't. You definitely don't want to be giving up this tier one tower this early. He can just TP down there, get some treants, and pull the aggro up the tower, which is probably what he wants to do right now. Although he's going to go top to secure the room, and mm, rise will be okay. Yeah, thinking about uh, setting something up onto a rise. It is a regeneration at the top position here with the four minute marks, and Bone Seven will grab it once tower. more. Rise comes to contest though, and this could cost Bone Seven his life. Arise with plenty of right clicks, they will be able to bring him down, and it is Skyrat that finishes him off with one last burst of damage. But now Puck wants vengeance, finds a Dream Coil, takes a Crypt Swarm to the face after he gets silenced, can't phase shift it. Now throws a silence of his own. It'll be a dead Sky Wrath. And they find the counter kill on the puck as Arise. Now on the run. Nice body blocks from Pylai Die. Will secure the kill there. Blonde TPs in with a magic missile, but not enough to uh, keep Death Prophet alive. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Quix was able to finish off that tier one tower. So I think across the map, you have to label that a victory for MYM. Yeah, I agree. Um, Bone Seven dying again. And Bone Seven had a decision there. Like, he, he secured the. Well, he, he didn't even secure the room for Puck. He had to take it himself, but. I, I think maybe the better option there was TPing bottom and defending the tier 1 tower. He can just draw aggro off the tower, get some trance out, and they didn't have to lose that bottom tier 1 tower, but just over a rune, they take a kind of even trade on kills, but losing the bottom tier 1 tower definitely makes that MY favored. Yeah. And now the Weaver will just rush a Midas. Uh, Quix has the recipe coming out on the Courier, and almost enough gold to pick up the gloves, which he will snag at the side shop here in just a couple of seconds. So we're looking at a five minute and 30 second hand to Midas, which is a pretty damn good timing. And getting an early tower kill is one way to really accelerate that timing, but there's no doubt about it. This Weaver will be very farmed very quick. And Envy not going for a hand of Midas on Razor, um, which is kind of awkward. It's awkward to get the Midas, I mean. So standard yeah. stuff coming out of him, but now Cloud9 have to worry about this late game as this Weaver will start to hit critical mass when this Weaver would, no or pardon me, when this Razor would normally be peaking. Well, hold that thought though is up top. Howie 2000 connects with an ice path on two. Dual breath comes out, and that will be enough to repel Ace as he takes a liquid fire to boot. Yeah, and the uh, the ward plan at top lane getting immediately dewarded. So that's a pretty important ward as well if Cloud9 can get vision uh, near the tower at top lane. So MYM with the immediate deward. Uh, that's these early wards being denied is quite nice. So I'd say MYM across the board looking really good. Their safe lane's going well. Mid lane DP, you've got two deaths, but at this stage, the fact that DP has the first blood, has decent stats, is farming all right, kind of makes up for that. Yeah, I mean her CS is quite good. She's uh, number three overall, tied with the position one of Cloud Nine, and actually number one on net worth of all things. That first yeah. blood gold really helping her out. Radiant and now has Null Tally Bracer and some phase boots. So even for just the seven minute mark, she's decently tanky already. And we'll grab that exorcism coming up at level nine. Cloud Nine will look for a tower kill in the top lane. Uh, they will start to pressure this tier one alley with three points in the liquid fire, helping in the push quite significantly. But uh, MYM will be there to repel the initial onslaught. Though I think Cloud9 will continue to shove into this tower as they get a fresh creep wave here. Death Prophet has a TP, so if they Dyer's if they want to react, they, they can with attack. the Death Prophet. Uh, face boots, no exorcism just yet, so it's still like you can still TP in, and a Crypt Swarm or two could likely secure your team some kills here. Um, but ideally, you want the Death Prophet maybe getting the level nine and getting that point in exorcism before um, joining top lane. They're pinging exactly where Pylai Dai is, by the way. That was a that was a Weaver ping onto the Wraith King. It was a purple ping, so they have a very good idea of what Cloud9 are up to. Yeah, I'm how curious how they saw him though. I don't see any radiant wards think, in the vicinity. And he's still I definitely think just general play. map awareness. Like you kind of it's it's a very kind of common a fairly common move to go for that flank, especially when the tower is low. Uh, you have this tower down to three hundred forty five HP. That's where you want to secure it, and the best way to zone them out is to have that one hero flank from behind. So, yeah, especially with Ace at low HP, that's a pretty yeah. easy tower dive for the most part. You've you've got the backup that can come from Nature's Prophets. So with Bone Seven TP in, it's essentially like four heroes top. And Weaver hasn't got a TP. Actually, Weaver just picked up a TP as well. I didn't see that uh, a second ago. So there's multiple TP responses available. Yeah. So you'll, you'll often see a lot of Death Prophets actually grab the ultimate before that last Radiant's point in Crypt Swarm. Just for situations like this, so you have Exorcism at your disposal, and you can TP in to help. But they will just let the tower fall. Glyph has been used, and they will back up appropriately and not give Pylai Die the opening he was looking for. 
tower does get finished off by the Radiant. Ooh, down cool. bottom. Weaver gets initiated on. Or pardon me, it's Bone 7 that gets initiated on. His blonde rotates and he will just TP home. So no kill down Yeah, there. I think I think it's to let the tower go. Uh, with the liquid, the, the, the tower was going to die regardless and getting a deny was going to be tricky. Unless they, they could maybe get some kills up. But as soon as you TP up top, it means Cloud9 found the other lanes and can pressure the other lanes. Like DP TPing away from mid lane or Weaver TPing away from bottom means his tower can be pressured. So... Not necessarily worth it, and hey, Envy at top missed the last time the tower, so he's actually, I mean, he's still, he's still really farmed, but he's not as farmed as he'd like to be. Yeah, and he will just go into power treads here, and probably gonna rush the mech still. No, Man, this is Null, Null Talisman Gaming. Puck's got two Null Talismans. <laughs> this item is too OP. <laughs> oh, Bone was... 7 on his two Null Tallies as well. That is a total of five Null Talismans in eight minutes here. Yeah. Jesus. That's... That's quality. <laughs> Fath, I don't know if you caught that, but VS TP'd away from Fata at the bottom rune there. Really, really nice little juke spot that he used. So Fata not really finding too many. He's been involved in all three of the kills so far, but that's mostly come from ganks towards his lane. So yeah, he's not going to be too worried because his blink's coming online soon. And once he has blink dagger, that's where he can really have high impact across the map. Yeah, MYM will smoke up with their two supports in the Centaur, rotate towards top, and they may find Pylai die. He's only level 4, so of course no reincarnation. This should end up being a pretty straightforward kill. Plenty of stuns to bring him down. There's that double edge for that final burst of damage. And MYM will tip the scales once more and take a hero kill advantage. 4-3 to three at the 9 minute mark. And that'll be yeah. that. Just just a Pylai die kill, not a big kill, but... It's important just to get Centaur step by step closer to his blink dagger, so it, it makes it his farm top lane safe because you know Pilot is not there, it gets him a bunny from the kill, and hey, look, he's got a free creep right now to farm. He does have to contest Envy there, and Envy realizes he's close to his blink, so I think part of Envy's objective right now is to slow down the blink by contesting this farm, but Centaur's blink is going to come at a similar time to Puck, so MYM, I'd say, is still in pretty even footing with Cloud9. Yeah, Fada with this interesting Null Tally build, as you pointed Maybe out, sort of delaying the blink timing attack. a little bit, but still on par with a with a great timing window right before that 10 yes. minute mark. And with that, Cloud9 will group up and start to knock down some of these other tier 1 towers. Four heroes rotating oh, towards the mid, Bone 7 farming up Ancients, but we'll be able to join the party once uh, the engagement breaks out. Highlight Dial so hit level 5, Radiance still no reincarnation, and NYM may just let this tower fall. They don't have a glyph, and they don't seem particularly interested in mounting a defense here. Down she goes, Radiance and it is Eternal Envy to grab the last hit fallen. this time. The big problem is, like, AOI is going to have a mech and 100 gold. You've got Fata with his blink. Fighting into this is really tricky. The central blink's key, but even with the central blink, like, team fights are going to be hard for them. They, they kind of, what they can do is try and blink, burst down one target with the blink centaur, and then kind of disengage, because Weaver's not really the best team fight hero right now with his current items. The Midas slows down his, whatever his first big item's going to be, the BKB or the Lincolns, I imagine. I say BKB, because against Puck, BKB is a lot better than Lincolns, because all of Puck's spells actually don't care about Lincolns. BKB helps actually keep you alive against the puck. So maybe he, I think he should go for that over the Lincoln. Oh, top Fada with great initiation here. Dream Coil on three. The Exorcism gets deployed, but it oh, might be enough as Arise takes the Stampede and he will make it out. It looks like they'll find Blonde in the tree line and it will be a three for nil. Triple kill for Bone7 with all that right click. And just a huge burst of damage coming out onto MYM. Beautiful plays from Fada. His positioning and he was in the trees above the tower was so perfect because there was a ward behind the tower. MYM were like, okay, we can push this tower. We've got great vision behind, but we'll see the puck coming. If you see the puck coming, you back off or position yourself such that he can't get a three hero waning rift dream call off, but Radiant's he was already there in the trees attack. and great initiation from Father. And now they'll be able to grab a tier two tower following that. Eight seconds well, on the Father glyph, wants but... mid. He may find quick too. Whip won't even be up in time. They'll dive to tier two a little bit, just harassing Radiant's with the plasma field. And now Fada, he does set his sights on mid, Dyer's as you mentioned. Quick, at about half health. Attack. We'll get off the Dream Coil, or pardon me, we'll get off the Shikuchi, despite the silence, and that'll be the end of it. So a nice reaction from Quicks. If Fada could have caught him a little more off guard with the silence, probably would have been a kill, but... Weaver with the fast fingers and the fast little scarab legs there. Here we go, we got some blade mails up. Well, a blade mail up, Prophet. There you go. Only two Natalis. Didn't go for the third. I'm a bit disappointed, but there's, yeah. there's two. The two is a lot more standard from what I've gathered. I've only seen the third one, I think, once. We saw it yesterday or the day before, and it 
It's okay. It feels something... like a he was doing at WEC against EG. He was doing a lot of this three. A lot of the three. I mean, okay. It's, it's like this two versus three. It's it's very small. The different the advantage it gives. At the same time, it's a very small in gold investment. So yeah, it's, it's just personal preference. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer necessarily to what's the right number. Yeah. Centaur will grab his blink dagger here just shy of the 13 minute mark as Cloud Nine move into the Roche pit. It looks like it won't be scouted by the Radiant side. They've got a ward on the high ground, but there is this nice little bout of fog here that Cloud9 will use to their advantage, and MYM not making any movements towards the pit. Looks like this will be an early Roche, completely uncontested, and they'll be able to bring it down pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, this, being on the die side, having Liquid Fire this early Roche is so hard to stop. And even if MYM kind of know what's going on, trying to contest that into a Puck is just disaster. Puck's gone top, he's going to get quick. Maybe a solo kill with the deep hole. Oh. Yeah, very close. To get off the time lapse. We're just in the nick of time. Now Fada on the run. The rest of the support train is here. He'll get silenced, and Fada will bite off more than he can chew as they find the turnaround kill. But it does secure the Roche for his team. Life there. That was... Yeah. I didn't, I didn't see how many he had, but I'm guessing he'd been like stockpiling charges for a while because uh, he, he would not have survived that without like 10 plus 1 charges, I want to say. Yeah. Now MYM. We'll look for a tower kill of their own, but it's already been a tower exchange. Down bottom, Bone 7 secures that tier 1 tower, and this is at the very least a break even, and Cloud9 will continue to move forward. Now they TP in, and they're looking for some cleanup. Can they find a stun on the Wraith King? MYM with a good split moving into the trees, and 3 will TP home. Ace and Rise on the run. Ace will make it out, and so will Rise. So a couple of wasted TPs from Cloud9, but no big deal. Well played by uh, MYM. Down bottom, Ace actually misses the hoof stomp here. Bone 7 pops his blade mail, just throws in the right clicks, and now Body Ace, <laughs> that was kind of a odd <laughs> movement into the trees, and he'll get completely blocked by the tree end. Nicely played by Bone 7, and that's where you see that blade mail coming in handy. He pops it, and the centaur didn't really know what to do. You, yeah, you, you don't want a double, double edge, edge into a blade mail, that's for damn sure. You're taking, like, two double edges yourself if you're, if you're doing that, so... <laughs> there oh, you go. Man, Bone that's... 7 gets a freebie. Even if he hits the stun, he's not. I don't think he's killing Bone Seven there. So, yeah, maybe yeah. if he hit the stun, he would have had a chance just to gallop away while he was stunned yeah. with the with the tree ends. But he could have he could have double edged during the stun, so the blade mail doesn't get proc. But it wouldn't have been enough damage. Bone Seven can then just you know, walk away. But yeah, well played by Bone Seven. He's he's on the board and doing really well now. He's got two point two k gold. So next item coming soon. Everyone on Cloud Nine just gets so farmed from all these tower kills they're getting and and the Roshan money as well. They got the courier one. So it's all this. It's all this global goal. When your poorest hero still has almost 4k net worth, you're in a really good spot. Yeah. And the mech has been completed on Aoi. He was close to it a while ago, but great timing there. Looks like he'll be moving into a Yules with that Void Stone. So he's starting to come online a little bit. And looking at net worth, Dire Side in pretty good shape. Weaver's still Radiant's topping the net worth chart because of that attack. early Midas and that early tower kill he picked up. But uh, I think the tides will start to change here as Fada, mid lane, invisibility rune, he will get scattered out, they'll put down a sentry, Bone 7 comes in, and they'll just bring down the vengeful spirit straight away. Now, Death Prophet, possibly in some trouble, does have the Yules, and that'll buy her some time. Now Fada on the run, will phase shift the Crypt Swarm, but takes a silence, and a lot of damage coming his way, he will fall to the double edge of the Centaur, and Bone 7 will just try to hightail it out of there. Create some space in the bottom lane, though, as the tier 2 tower falls, and now Envy and Owie, Pressing into the tier threes, while the rest attack. of MYM desperately looking for Dyer's some more recovery kills. Exorcism about to attack. expire. They're not really in a great position to defend, and they won't do too much damage to the tower, but any damage to a tier three at the 16 minute mark is just a bonus for Cloud9. They're just, they're just like maneuvering MYM. They're kind of the puppeteers here, and MYM have to keep responding. They're like, oh, we killed the puck for the sky. It's a good trade, but really they're just taking too much damage elsewhere. They'll do a fake back here. Macro Pyre comes out from Owie. Bone 7 on his way in. There's the mech to pick everyone back up. Ice Path almost clips the Weaver, but he will make it back to safety. Ace looking for the wraparound. Will get caught by Pylai Die. Gets stunned up. All the follow up damage is there, and now he goes down. So it looked like Cloud9 may get caught in a poor situation, but the uh, global nature of the nature's profit. Allows them to turn it around, and now they will try to break high ground. It's a 5v4 on the field, Radiant's and they'll have their uh, their puck attack. joining them momentarily as this tier 3 taking heavy damage very early on. <sighs> Liquid fire, so so good, and MYN just so unable to fight. Like, And one hero goes down the centaur, and I mean, whoever it is, suddenly you lose so much damage output. It's just so easy for Cloud9 to go high ground. Yeah, now they'll catch a rise inside of the ice path. 
swap from Blom, but he takes a lot of return Radiant damage. Tier 3 tower goes down without an exorcism. This is such a difficult hold to make. The Weaver still isn't in fighting form. We've looked at his items, and he's almost got a BKB, but still not quite there. Ace goes in, connects with a stun. Now a lot of return damage coming his way. They'll bring down the Death Prophet and the Centaur simultaneously. And all of a sudden, this is looking terrible for MYM. A buyback from the Death Prophet. Doesn't have the ultimate for another five seconds. Gets caught by the Ice Path and will get repelled back to the well. Radiant's More space back. created for the melee racks to fall. Radiant's and Cloud9, they won't even back up with that. They'll still hang around and try and finish off the range racks here. Bone 7 up to a tag on 3 as he rejoins the party here. Rise taking a max damage plasma field. Bone 7 angling to be in a good position here as Death Prophet ends up with a dieback. No exorcism for him. And that'll be the end of him now around the backside. Blonde and Quicks will finish off the Jakiro. And Cloud9 starting to get repelled, but will just turn once again, go on to the Weaver. Another swap from Blonde will keep him alive. But MYM, they can't even take a fight in their own base. They're just forced to watch their structures die, and Cloud9 will walk away with only conceding a Jakiro. Yeah, this, this Cloud9 draft, once they got that first tower, all the others quickly fell to follow. Like, that first tower just gives them that little gold boost. Like, everything about like Cloud9 from start to finish, like getting the courier kill, it's, it's having the farm across the board, having a Blink Dagger on your Wraith King, he zones out MYM's heroes who are trying to defend their axes. Having the mech on the Jakira means they can push high ground so much earlier, like, having these farm supports adds so much to your team this early in the game, and that's where Tower Gold, Courier, Roshan Gold makes such a big difference. And of course, you've got your core heroes who are getting beefier and beefier as time goes on, and... I mean, having a Dagon 3 on your profit sounds a bit trolling. That can get caught out. <laughs> he double-edged the blade mail! Oh, oh my oh, gosh. Man. Well, the that... Dagon sounds trolly, but it, this is like against Death Prophet. You want to burst down Death Prophet during Exorcism, and Dagon the best time to do that. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it certainly is. And with it, this leveled up already. We'll see Quicks and uh, Fada go blow for blow, but Fada will be on the back foot and orbs to safety. That could have been a free kill on Bone Seven, but instead it ends up as a one for one. All he had to do was hold that double edge for another like one second, and the blade mail would have worn off. Oh god. Wow. Sad times, sad times. Sad times indeed. Cloud9 in That's great shape here though, about a 15,000 gold, 7,500 experience lead. And they'll just go back Radiant's to farming, they clear out the Radiant Jungle, and um, let's see, what's Razor working on? Oh, he's picked up a nice BKB there, fresh 10 seconds on him. And Weaver did complete his BKB after that, uh, s well, not really successful defense in the bottom lane, but skirmish as, uh, as it was. And um, he will stay on his 10 second magic immunity. So maybe in the next fight, Weaver will be able to do some work. Still doesn't really hit that hard, but at least he'll be able to survive a bit longer this time. And the crazy thing about that last push is Cloud9 did it without all these items they just got. Like Razor picked up the full BKB. He didn't even have an Ogre Club. Wraith King buys a full Blade now. Your Puck buys a full Yule Scepter. The Prophet did get the Dagon 3 like right after they got the Rax. Oh, yeah, it had nothing to do with the high ground push. So Cloud9 next. Rack's attempt is going to be with all these new, newly purchased items, and that's where defending for MYM, I, they've got a Weaver BKB, but I don't think that's going to be anywhere near enough to defend with. Yeah. And there are also two buybacks on cooldown for another three minutes or so. That's a pretty big window of time where Cloud9 can afford to be a little more aggressive, and if they do grab a couple of stray pickoffs, mounting a defense from MYM will be uh, particularly difficult here. Tier 2 tower in the mid, the only outer tower still standing for the Radiant side, but Cloud9 are in absolutely no hurry. They know they have a big edge right now, and uh, all of a sudden that Weaver's early farm just seems so much less scary than it did maybe 10 minutes ago. Yeah, he, he had free farm, he got an early tower, he had a 5 minute Midas. Like, that, that's a, that's what the thing, like you just, when you're doing a draft, like you never, in general you just don't, you shouldn't worry about your opponent's safe lane carry free farming if it's a like traditional carry, if it's a Weaver, Antimate, Spectre, like five to ten minutes of free farm isn't going to lose you the game. The bigger problem is when your opponents have like safe lane farming centaurs and tides, like the EG style safe lane farmer. These heroes will get a fast blink and then control the game. Weaver can't do that. Yeah. Rise almost gets picked off by Fada, but he does get off the Yules to buy himself some time. Stampede baited out. Now Ace will be caught inside of the Sprout, and it looks like he will fall. Yeah, down he goes. Meanwhile, off to the side, Pylai dies, zoning out quicks, and will burn a dust on uh, for this. Will TP home, and will barely make it out. Pylai died, just not enough right-click damage, but they do finish off the Centaur, and now Cloud9 will group up and commence the push once more. Yeah. I think they... They're looking for pick. They're not fully attempting a push until they have the reincarnation, maybe again. But yeah, they'll gladly take pickoffs and pickoffs. Arise, he's close. Arise, yeah. They'll use the Yules to interrupt it. Now he takes a silence and Dagon to the face. 
As Death Prophet <laughs> falls. Nice. Yep. Dyer's middle tower I think is it under may attack. be uh, just about all over for MYM at this stage. They'll maybe mount one last defense, but it's going to be a scrappy one. Uh, there's very little they've got to, to deal with what Cloud9 are throwing at them. Yeah, I think they'll group up and try and finish off this tier 2 in the mid, and MYM probably won't mount too much of a defense here, especially with the Death Prophet down. This should end up just being a free tower and a pretty low risk push for Cloud9. And yeah, there's that liquid fire coming out already. Attack. It is just ridiculous how good this ability is at pushing down towers. But an interesting build from Ali. We commented on the dual breath at level 1 and that he just completely transitioned out of it and went for an ice path liquid Radiant's fire build. Just wanted that value point early on. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if it was a misclick, but he, he skilled it before like the creep waves even engaged, so yeah. normally he would hold on to it. Well, maybe, I mean, it is it is a value point because the movement speed is 30% slow at all levels, so... Mm -hmm. um, in so, it's a decent slow at level one, but I'm, I'm not sure what, what whether because normally I see him go for the liquid fire ice path without even getting a single point in jewel breath. So Silence. not yeah. sure. But either way, hasn't hasn't hurt Cloud Nine or hasn't really been much of an issue this game. Yeah, definitely not. Not a big deal. Just interesting and kind of worth commenting on, I suppose. But um, yeah, things still continuing to look grim for the Radiant side. Any other item progression? Uh, not much other than uh, Bone 7 here. He's got himself a Dagon level 5. So you talked about burst damage to try and uh, <laughs> cut down the Nature's Prophet. I think he has uh, certainly achieved that uh, achieved that goal. Arise working at BKB. This is this is smart, smart from Arise, but it's when, when you're this far behind, it's like, smart item choice or two isn't gonna isn't gonna turn the game around this day. It's a 20k gold lead. Cloud9 are just camping for Roshan. Aegis is all they're waiting for, so I, I like MYM's plan to try and smoke and find the pickoff. And, and they uh, might find Fada here. He's pretty low on mana, but again with the quick fingers, will blink to dodge the hoof stomp there. Will orb into the trees, phase shift, and nothing Ace can do about it. Another wasted stampede, and it's only level 1. He hasn't hit level 11 yet, so that's a 90 second cooldown. And that could be costly as Roche has come back up. MYM have no vision, so they're not privy to it, but uh, an ultimate that would have come in handy in this scenario. Will be another free Roshan, and it looks like an Aegis once more to go to Eternal Envy. Yeah, so high ground push probably coming soon is uh, with this Maybe Cloud Knight. I, I, I think they're ready. No yeah, shot. Nature's yes. Prophet takes the Aegis. Okay. You may just be going for some uh, big ROTK style TPs where you just TP into five heroes. He, he'll kill people. He'll Blade Mail and Dagon 5 and. That's a dead Skyrath Mage, that's a dead Ventral Spirit. This yeah. Skyrath Mage does have a mech, but it's still very yeah, squishy. You know, and I feel like the level 5 Dagon synergizes with this build pretty well because it gives you some decent stats. 21 Intelligence, 9 Damage, 3 all stats. That's a, quite a bit of right click. He I mean, he hits for 180 right now at the 25 minute mark. So there's something to be said for that Dagon, not outside of just the burst, but also the, the right clicks. We'll see the laser once more as uh, they pick off the Centaur in the top lane. 5v4 on the field. This should be a pretty easy window to try and breach high ground. Centaur is lacking the buyback right now. But Fon 9 are in absolutely no hurry here as level 1 Dagon comes out on the Fairy Dragon. Yeah, that's the thing. Like this game, they could go for a high ground push now and probably either slowly siege the base or even just try and dive in and win a team fight. Or they can just sit back, farm the map efficiently. Like they've, they've got options. But uh, I think right now they're just pushing out lanes. They will group up towards mid lane and Highlight I even just high ground in the bottom lane, just keeping the all lanes pressured as much as possible. Yep. And here we go. Pilot Die in the front lines, just chopping away at the supply depots here. Has himself a maelstrom that he's picked up following that last fight. Centaur has respawned, but this is a difficult defense to make. Weaver picks up a Desolator, a big item to do some damage in this fight. Maybe it'll be enough to tip the scales. We'll sold his minus for this. That was actually, I think, an impor important decision, but... Uh, that is a pretty all-in play there. Is they need to make this defense. Two lanes of racks down will make this much more difficult to hold. Ace angling for the initiation. You can see Cloud9 moving towards him as soon as he goes to hop in. And he gets Yule the second he jumps forward. Pops the Stampede, but already off to a bad start. The Skywrath Mage gets dropped, as does the Ventral Spirit right away. Pile I Die will fall for the first time, but... Hell, that's what he wanted. Reincarnate will be utilized. Now Quicks goes down. They'll trap the Death Prophet inside of a Yule's picker off in a matter of seconds. Ace to boot, and that will be a full team wipe. Cloud9 still at full HP. And GG well played his call. 
It was just too big of a deficit at that point. Everyone on Cloud9 just playing playing their role, getting their farm, and just taking tower after tower. So uh, it's Cloud9 doing what Alliance could not yesterday and taking down a, a pretty formidable MYM squad. This team by no means a pushover, but Cloud9 just showing they're uh, a step a step ahead in the draft and just overall like their movements around the around the map early on just a, a little bit a little bit more efficient. Yeah, I don't know that there's too much else to say about the uh, about that game. By the end, it seemed uh, pretty straightforward and well played by Cloud9. They're certainly on point today with a very straightforward execution. The Eternal Envy played a hell of a razor. 5-0 and 6, the only one to go deathless in that game with uh, a perfect record. So well done by him. We still have plenty more Dota coming your way today, folks. Uh, the uh, gauntlet of Cloud9 will continue on. Up next will be Cloud9 versus Cleave, and then after that we will have Album Sheet facing off against Team Secret. Our next match is scheduled to start in about half an hour, a quick game to get things started. So we will have a decent break, and then we'll be coming right back. I'm Zayori Solo in the studio, joined remotely by BTS Gods. You can follow us on Twitter at TV, at BTS Gods, and at Beyond the Summit. And we'll see you guys after this break. <laughs>